Hello everyone, this is Cobalt. In this video, I wanted to discuss two Smash-inspired platformers. Nowadays, with Wi-Fi being the only option that a lot of people have to play, I wanted to offer two potential alternatives to Smash that have a pretty good online option. They each offer unique mechanics that distinguish their gameplay from Smash and bring a fresh experience to the 2D fighter genre. I've played both of these games quite a bit over the past few years, and it always made for a nice change from Smash when I needed a break from it, so I wanted to take a moment to compare the mechanics and uniqueness that each of these games bring to the table. These two games are Brawlhalla, the Blue Mammoth flagship game with over 8 million players, and Rivals of Aether, the retro brawler from Dan Fornas. So, let's take a minute to analyze the mechanical distinctions these games have from Smash and what makes them enjoyable. Let's start with Brawlhalla. I got introduced to Brawlhalla about two years ago. I've played the game for both fun and mildly competitively, entering a few of their free online tournaments and gotten to platinum in their online ranked mode, and have had a lot of fun with the game. Firstly, I'll discuss the aesthetic. The character designs and character models in this game look very well done, and match up appropriately with the character selection screen when compared to their in-game counterparts. The art style of Brawlhalla is cartoonish but still visually pleasing, and they ensure that there's sufficient character customization when it comes to color variety, skins, weapon skins, badges, etc. BMG did a very good job of ensuring that the art style was unique and different, and that's always something that I've really liked about the game. And that being said, this game is free, and any of the 49 characters can be unlocked using the in-game currency. This is an excellent method for gameplay, and the microtransactions are 100% visual and have no impact on gameplay. I like this model because I can gain access to the entire roster without paying a cent. I've spent, I think, $30 on Brawlhalla for some custom skins and on the most recent battle pass that they have. I wanted to support the developers because I had gotten a lot of enjoyment out of the game and felt that it had been worth it to me. I think a lot of the weapons are unique, fun, and invite a lot of potential for creativity and combo game. But like everybody, I have weapons that I absolutely hate fighting against. I think the most common one that people hate fighting is the Rocket Lance, which I certainly can agree with. The large disjoint and priority provides excellent options for stuffing out moves and suppressing oncoming attacks and are really good in the current metagame to the chagrin of many of the top players even. That being said, the Rocket Lance does have a very limited number of approach options and baiting them out you can get pretty hard punishes off of it. So there is certainly counterplay to the Lance, it's just not very fun counterplay. I most enjoy the gauntlets and the guitars, which offer quick options and close range attacks that result in pretty good string weapons. I've tended to adopt a very bait and punish heavy playstyle when it comes to Brawlhalla, and in a lot of cases whiff punishing makes the largest difference. The neutral tends to be a tad on the bait and punish side in general, I'd say, and it kind of relies on waiting for your opponent to make the first move. And the weapons offer a diverse set of playstyles. One thing I do like about it as well is that no character has signatures that are projectiles. Every move that a character has is just a disjointed hitbox usually, which is a refreshing approach. Though each character does have the ability to throw their weapon, which offers every character a projectile, and each weapon yields a different hitbox size, which at times can be rather annoying. The game offers a uniformity between the characters, giving each the exact same unarmed attacks and jump height, which is a really interesting approach to a fighting game, but it's a unique aspect that I actually really enjoy, because it means that a character's neutral is mostly the same when weapons aren't involved. This also applies to characters' hurt boxes. On each character, there's an identical circle to represent their hurt box, and these hurt boxes don't really shift based on the character's movement. I really appreciate the uniformity of hurt boxes when it comes to this, since the character's sprite is approximately the same size. Though, the hurtbox is not shifting means that the character model does not always line up with where the hurtbox is located, so attacks that look as though they should hit can miss. Most characters' arms and lower legs do not have hit collision properties, and this can breed some form of inconsistency, but considering all the characters are the same size, this isn't too large an issue, and I haven't had very many instances of this being a problem, but the distinction is worth noting nonetheless. The game has very unique mechanics for a platform fighter. The introduction of weapons is an approach that I find very interesting, and the game boasts several different movement options. There's no shield or parry mechanics, but each character has a spot dodge, which doubles as a dash when a direction is added to it, and air dodges in all directions. Each character has multiple jumps, a recovery move either underarmed or with a weapon, and pretty good aerial mobility, resulting in a lot of creative edge guarding, trapping, or camping, thanks to the wall cling mechanic, which rejuvenates some of your recovery options. The game utilizes a mechanic called gravity canceling, which allows you to perform any rounded move out of an air dodge, whether that be a light attack or a signature. There's also the chase dodge, which allows you an additional dodge in the direction of your choosing after hitting your opponent, allowing for potential follow-up combos to further press your advantage state. The game also allows you to alter the attributes or stance of your character based on their stats. You can increase the strength, dexterity, speed, or defense of your character by one point at the cost of one point in another stat. This offers you the ability to make certain combos true with high enough dex, certain characters to kill insanely early with overwhelming power, the ability to survive a little longer with a defense buff, or better mobility with increased speed, which allows you to slightly compensate for your character's weaknesses or to further enhance their strengths. Though each character usually has a stance that is preferable to use over the other when it comes to competitive viability. 
This game is a refreshing option to switch to, and these mechanics offer a fun experience to be had in both a casual or a competitive setting. When coming from Smash, this game is a tad slower. Not the engine or anything like that, just the mobility and movement of the characters I've noticed is slower when compared to Smash. Though to be fair, I'm playing with a controller and at the highest level of competitive play, and when using a keyboard, I've seen the movement be insanely fast. And being slower isn't necessarily a bad thing, it's just different. The overall mechanics of Brawlhalla make it pretty different from Smash and neutral, so between Rivals and Brawlhalla, I'd say Rivals is definitely closer to Smash, purely in terms of mechanics. It's also slightly floatier as well, allowing aerial pressure to be applied more often and resulting in slower fall speeds. There aren't a huge amount of true combos in this game, with a lot of weapons having dodge frames in between attacks so it can be very read heavy. Though that being said, it's not like there aren't any at all. Downlight side air for the hammer, blasters, sword, and spear for example. Downlight recovery on sword, downlight recovery on blasters... Hmm. Noticing a pattern here. But in all honesty, it has a lot of variety and creativity that it allots to the players, and each weapon's unique traits make the neutral really enjoyable to learn about. The level of controller customization is also good, and gives you a lot of freedom to switch it up to fit your specific controller needs. The ability to camp in this game is really high if you want to. A lot of players don't do it, but when you encounter one that does, man oh man is it exhausting to deal with. Stall is annoying in any game of course, but in Brawlhalla the options for it are quite prevalent and sometimes I feel as though it encourages a passive playstyle, though Smash has gotten quite familiar with that lately. The wall cling and multiple jumps coupled with certain weapons incredibly safe aerials sometimes can make for a miserable experience for the opponent. The amount of spammable moves in this game is also really high when compared to almost any other fighting game that I've dealt with. I'll see people that have made it to plat just by doing that. I mean, don't get me wrong, it's smart spamming, but it can still be really annoying to deal with at times. I do like the method that BMG takes with their patches. They modify small things, usually shaving off small pieces of frame data and damage output or knockback to balance the game in an effective way. And when doing a particular weapon redesign, they operate it in experimental mode and give play features time to be tested by the community in a beta testing format before fully going through with a redesign. Their patches are certainly not always perfect, and given the current meta, I think that certain weapon nerfs are overdue, but most of the time, it seems like they're trying to make a genuine effort to make patches that will promote the health of the game without completely overturning it, though I know many of the top players would disagree with me in this regard, and they do know better than me, but just my personal opinion. I like their ranked mode, but there is no 1 vs 1 non-ranked mode just for practice. You have Strike Out, but that's not exactly the same since you have to play with three different legends, which is the equivalent to Squad Strike and Smash. Experimental is as close as we get to that, and I'm not sure if BMG just uses that as a substitute for 1v1, but when experimental features are in place, it's just less appealing. And I'm not gonna lie, I cannot stand Brawl of the Week. Usually, and I just use it to gain gold so I can buy more characters. I'd rather have additional weekly challenges or something than have to go into a 3 vs 3 bubble bowl or whatever it is and hope I don't have completely incompetent teammates or that I'm the incompetent one if I've never played the mode before. It's just not fun for me. Some people may enjoy it, but I usually play Brawlhalla solo or in duos, and when playing with others, Brawl of the Week usually is not that high on our priority list. The only game we've really done and had fun with is Capture the Flak. It's kind of like any team-based game, I suppose, that you need good teammates to succeed, but it's still not fun, at least for me. The training mode is really good and has a lot of options for you to work with, even going as far as showing frame gaps between combos, and creating your own room to battle in allows you to customize game modes all from single screen between rule sets, characters, all of it. Take some notes here, Smash Bros. They've recently added in a battle pass as well. I'm honestly not super fond of this gaming model structure because it forces you to dedicate a certain amount of time to the game to complete an objective. But again, it's not required and is purely cosmetic, so it's not a huge deal. And you're able to gain items from the battle pass without purchasing anything. Basically the same business structure as Fortnite. They've also incorporated a plethora of crossovers where they will add skins for characters from other popular IPs. Mm -hmm. Now that I say that out loud, the comparison to Fortnite business model is getting closer and closer. Anyway, they have a diverse array of characters from Cartoon Network, including Adventure Time, Steven Universe, and most recently Ben 10. They've also done crossovers with WWE, Shovel Knight, Hellboy, Rayman, and Tomb Raider, and have actually managed to pull in Shovel Knight and Rayman, both of whom a lot of people wanted in Smash, which I thought was really cool. Now all I need is for them to add Hollow Knight as a playable character and I'll be good to go. I mean, Silk Song is coming out soon after all. Up next is Rivals of Aether. I first played Rivals about three years ago and played it pretty religiously during the summer of that year. Aesthetically, I don't think this game is quite as polished as Brawlhalla. The character art and trailers are fantastic, and even the character selection screen had really good quality artwork, though being more retro in a style reminiscent of NES classics. The in-game sprites are where things shift a bit for me. I know this is just a stylistic preference, but I don't really care for the actual in-game models that the sprites use. The retro style is fine for a lot of things, and this is completely personal preference, but when you have artwork on all of the characters that looks as clean and refreshing as those of the characters in Rivals of Aether, it's just a very large disparity from the actual in-game footage. 
The Smash and Brawlhalla character models look quite close in game to their screen select counterparts, and this is kind of a large difference for me that makes rivals lack a little bit. This is more apparent with some characters than others, and with such unique and different character designs, I'm never wondering which character I am or anything, it's just slightly less detailed in character models than I enjoy. Despite that, however, the stages have a lot of unique atmosphere and charm that I really did appreciate. I really love the character designs, each offering a different playstyle that's pretty apparent based solely on their character build. And I'm slightly disappointed that the in-game sprites don't quite capture the unique characters in their entirety as they are displayed on the selection screen. However, this is a fighting game and we're here to fight, so I'll quit complaining about the visuals and get into the meaty mechanics that this game has to offer. This game has a roster of 14 characters, which each offer unique fighting styles and mechanics associated with their kits. This is kind of the opposite take from Brawlhalla where they tried to make translation between characters pretty seamless. This isn't a negative either, it's just a different stylistic choice and offers different types of counterplay, and is more closely comparable to Smash in that regard with each character having different run speeds, weight, fall speed, jump heights, and aerial speeds. Rivals functions pretty similarly to Smash with each character having tilts, smash attacks, aerials, and specials, and being able to play it using a GameCube controller really made for a smooth transition and a very positive experience for me. It's really reminiscent of Melee. There's a pretty high skill floor and an even higher skill ceiling. The moves deal quite a bit of hit stun, which offers an incredibly diverse set of options for pulling off creative combos and encourages pressing the advantage state, which I thoroughly enjoy playing pretty aggressively most of the time myself. There are also several characters that have qualities heavily inspired by moves from Smash, such as Zetterburn's neutral special resembling Fox and Falco's Shine, and his up special resembling Firefox, Apps's up special resembling Pikachu's up special, and Claren's sword that has a tipper mechanic similar to Marth's, and it's worth noting that you can actually see at what point of the sword the tipper mechanic will stop, so that's a beneficial quality of life change when utilizing that mechanic. Unlike Smash, however, this game has no shield mechanic, only a parry mechanic that offers you a long duration window for a huge punish opportunity on your opponent should you parry their attack. This window is much more precise than it is in Smash, considering you can't shield the hit first, and the lag inflicted on your opponent by the parry is a lot more punishing than it is in Smash. Another thing it doesn't have is ledge grab. You've only got your aerial jump, wall jump, and directional air dodge. Wall jumps can be used at any time, including after your up special, despite being in freefall, restoring your special moves as a recovery option, making edge guarding and ledge trapping especially potent in this game. Rivals has a lot more tech than Brawlhalla does, some of it which is incorporated from melee. This includes wave dashing and crouch canceling, for instance. Things like Reverse Aerial Rush or RAR is implemented, as well as Jab Cancel, B-Reverses, and several others. I love the incorporation of this tech and think it offers more options to the character's movement and makes the game more freeform. The more freedom of movement and fluidity a platform fighter has, the more unique and creative the meta can become, and I absolutely love how fast-paced this game can be. It also offers controller customization, but one thing that I really appreciate with that is that it gives the ability to map short hop to a button. Now, short hopping isn't hard, but for someone like me who presses buttons incredibly aggressively, it can be a challenge at times, so this helps a lot and gives me an easier option to perform rising or falling aerials from either a short hop or a full hop. And this is such a simple quality of life change, but man is it appreciated. Now, I will fully admit that I'm not as familiar with the mechanics or competitive scene of Rivals as I am with Brawlhalla, but I still have given this game a fair amount of time, and I still thoroughly enjoy it. I also would like to acknowledge that the development team for Rivals is much smaller than that of Brawlhalla, and I think that Dan Fornas developed the game almost entirely on his own, and is listed as a solo developer on the Wikipedia page while Brawlhalla's dev team is larger, and are now actually owned by Ubisoft. There was obviously a lot of love put into Rivals. Each piece of it, from the game modes to the stage banning phases, looked meticulously crafted to be geared towards making an excellent fighting game. It even has solo story modes for all of the characters that's reminiscent of Smash's adventure modes that's pretty good in its own right. And of course the training mode is helpful, a unique feature in showing the DI lines based off of the opponent's trajectory. Now, Rivals costs $15 on Steam. It also happens to be the same price as Hollow Knight, and this honestly isn't that expensive, especially whenever compared to many games nowadays. But that being said, you can't unlock new characters without being blocked off by an additional paywall. And I'll also add that the cumulative amount of DLC that they have available costs more in total than the actual game did. There's over $50 of DLC, and $20 of that is just to get complete access to the entire roster. Now, I'm aware that Smash has also done this for about $5 a character, but with Smash they have some form of brand recognition. The first three Super Smash Bros. games in 64, Melee, and Brawl had no DLC. And while certainly in a different time period of gaming where DLC wasn't as prevalent, and I'm sure Smash would have monetized this if they could have, I think by Smash 4, this was kind of expected. I'm just not as much of a fan of this business model for Rivals of Aether. It's finally getting a port over to Switch, and I don't really want to purchase the game a second time just to have the opportunity to play it on Switch, but it will be the definitive edition with all of the characters available, so I'm probably going to buy it and play it again. They've added two unique crossovers in Ori from Ori in the Blind Forest and Shovel Knight from the game of the same name. Triple dipping a tad there, aren't we Shovel Knight? Eh, that's okay. You're one of indie games, Golden Boys. The difference between Brawlhalla and Rivals of Aether in this regard is that all of the characters that have been added to Brawlhalla 
are only skins of existing characters, whereas in Rivals of Aether, they're given their own unique character instead of just being a skin, and they've been given unique movesets to both of them that actually really encapsulates the feel of their original games in terms of mobility and attacks. Additionally, they have a fully customizable character creation mode where people have done some absolutely amazing things. This is a remarkable tool and offers a huge amount of creativity to the community and provides them with options to put characters that they've always wanted in fighting games into one. Hmm, I may have to do that with Hollow Knight. Anyway. Overall, I think that everyone honestly should play Brawlhalla. It's free and fun and you might really enjoy it. It's easy to pick up and understand pretty much right out of the gate, and is really fun to play with a group of people. And the bombs, weapons, and other thrown items make it accessible to casual play, and the ranked modes to competitive players. The normal casual modes offer a decent diversity of play modes, and the ranked modes offer a good option for those trying to actually improve. Most of the time. And when compared to the online system that Smash has set up, I'd say Brawlhalla is leaps and bounds ahead of it. Usually I see very little lag in matches, and when I do, it's not severe. They have fully adapted crossplay into the game, and it's available on every platform, making it really easy to play with friends. Rivals of Aether I'd honestly only suggest if you enjoyed fast-paced fighting games similar to Melee where your disadvantage state is really rough and you really need to keep comboing your opponent to gain momentum and advantage state. Though, when I began playing, I started with my friend who also knew nothing about the game, and we had a blast with it. I just think that playing it online was more of a dive into the deep end than the slowly dipping your toe into the pool provided by Brawlhalla. It's available on Steam and Xbox with a Switch port coming soon. They currently do not have available crossplay for the game, though. Both of these games have pretty well-developed competitive scenes, with the creators of each supporting the scene by attending or funding their tournaments. Brawlhalla even offers free online tournaments supported by the devs. In the description below, I've provided links where you can purchase these games or get more information. Brawlhalla is definitely a much easier game to pick up. Rivals is a more tech-specific game from what I've seen, and while Brawlhalla certainly does have advanced tech and stuff that you need to learn, the barrier for entry is much lower than for Rivals. I created a new account for Brawlhalla on my laptop in ranked mode, though I already knew how to play and played against incredibly low-level players at the start, but I was able to make it all the way to Platinum pretty quickly. In contrast, I logged into Rivals of Aether and played against people that looked like they had been playing for a long time, and I got my teeth kicked in, so I'm not sure how well I was being paired with people of comparable skill level or if I just sucked that bad. I know that I can't possibly hope to cover the vast amount of unique mechanics that each of these games has, let alone the tech in just a few short minutes, but I wanted to discuss them both since they've both brought me a lot of entertainment over the past couple of years, and with summer in full swing, I figured it'd be a perfect time to try out another platformer that has some pretty good online. So if you're still in quarantine and want a new game to try out or take a break from Smash that may or may not have a better Wi-Fi experience, maybe give these a shot. The platform fighter genre has expanded in great strides over the past couple of years, really pushing the boundaries of the mechanics and breathing fresh new options for movement capabilities and creative character design. There are inherent levels of limitation associated with the genre due to the side view nature of the games, and the end results being usually the same in eliminating your opponent's stocks. That forces developers to focus on enhancing the way your character feels and moves. This focus, I think, offers platform fighters a unique focal point that relies on the precision of design, primarily centered on mobility and fluidity when compared to other genres of games that focus heavily on combo inputs or aiming mechanics. And I'm not knocking games of other genres, just making the distinction as to what mechanics each of them tend to focus on that make them unique from the design perspective. And that's what I like about platform fighters. That's what makes them a unique gameplay experience to me. Anyway, I hope that you guys have found this content informative and will give either of these games a try. I think they're both worth your time. Once again, I'm Cobalt, and thanks for watching.